Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We are approaching a massive weekend on EAFC 24, not because of a new promo coming or new content that's expected, but because of a gameplay piece that is finally going to become available, and that is foot champs guys we have the first foot champs of the year and i think it's so important for you to get qualified and to get into this weekend's competition it's gonna help out your ultimate team a ton i want to break that down and why that's the case in today's video if you're excited for it drop a thumbs up subscribe if you're new let's look at yesterday's content really quick before we get into that discussion about foot champs yesterday we actually had some decent content not because all the spcs were great but at least we had multiple spcs one of which is seen in a very positive light and that is francis Coughlin, a live Road to the Knockouts Europa League SBC player. He is pretty good statistically. Four star weak foot, medium high work rates. He's pretty short, five foot nine, only one play style. I think there's some positives to this card. I also think it's just kind of mid as well. Some of the stats look a little bit mid. Some of those, obviously, only having one play style is a bit mid, in my opinion. Will he get some upgrades? Potentially. The biggest W about this card is he is a French midfielder in La Liga, which is amazing for links and squad building. And he's also only 46,000 coins. And a lot of people are doing this SBC. I might be one on the, I guess, the small portion of the crowd that says that they don't like this SBC. I think it's just kind of mid. I'm not going to do this SBC. I think the fodder is not worth this card's time. I just don't see this card being super usable for like more than another two weeks in this game. That's my personal opinion. But for 40k, you could do a lot worse SBCs. And of course, he does have the nice links. Now, because this SBC was dropped and it is very favorable, you see 1,900 people upvoting this SBC. You saw a lot of midfielders drop in price yesterday and also a lot of players that link to Coughlin go up. Frankie De Jong is a card that's down a lot right now. He was 70,000 coins when all of it on his 63K is now back to about 65,000 coins. I'm hoping that some of these midfielders, especially the top tier rare and meta ones, actually have a bit of a bounce back. Kind of like we had, remember when the Kudus SBC was dropped and Diaby and Inform Doku dropped off a bunch in price. What was that on Saturday? Yeah, these guys went from 55K down to 44,000 coins. But look at Diaby over these past couple of days. He's come right back to the mid 50K range. I'm hoping some of the same thing happens with a guy like De Young and some of the other midfielders that dropped a lot in price yesterday on this game. It might not happen. But it could. So that's where I'm seeing a lot of market movement right now, especially with this Coquitlin SBC. Now, Road to the Knockouts, there's a lot moving there too. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But that SBC, I, again, I'd give that like a 7, maybe an 8 out of 10. I just think for those of you that are doing it, he needs to get upgrades quickly. He needs to get upgrades, really, both of the upgrades, right? He needs to get a plus two, which is semi-favorable for the way they're sitting right now in the Europa League. He needs those upgrades, though, for him to be a usable card for at least a month or so into this game into the future. Now, other SBC we had yesterday was an 83 plus upgrade pack, which we'll be able to do again today. Guys, 82 rated squad requirement for this. It really is not that great a value, but a lot of us have 82 sitting around in the club. I did this yesterday. The pack weight actually seemed really bad. I mean, I was not a fan of that. Um, I think I got an 83 rated card from it. Was not a big fan of the pack weight. I, I know it is a chance at packing something great though, right? And there's a lot of cards now with having, of course, um, a promo team in packs. You've got a new team of the week that's coming out today. That 83 plus pack will be an SBC that a lot of people want to go and do. But uh, it's definitely not worth it. It's just kind of a fun gamble to do if you have some 82s in your club. Now, let's get to the big conversation this weekend especially impacting the market, but really your ultimate team, my ultimate team, a lot of us have the chance to get a lot of coins this weekend through the biggest competition that runs on the weekends, Foot Champs, guys. The Weekend League, as it is called. If you've been grinding division rivals, you've been working on these qualification points to get yourself the opportunity to play in Champs playoffs, which then you play and all you have to do is win four games and 10 from that. And even if you don't get it the first time around, you can actually get another shot at it. Uh, I'd like to make that known as well. A lot of people forget that if you don't qualify, you can technically qualify again. It's just you have to play a lot more rivals to get your qualification points up. But all of that work to get qualified for foot champs. And guys, this weekend is the first champs, right? Of course, it was delayed. We saw the counter counting down to last weekend. Didn't make sense. It's right counting down to this weekend. Guys, the rewards this year are different. And I think it actually 
while you may compare it to last year and say, ah, Nate, it's actually worse than last year, I think some of these rewards, not including the tradable team of the weeks, but instead including 85 plus packs as tradable rewards, it gives you the potential of getting something even better than last year. Now, also at the same time, this is the biggest and best competition every single week going from here forward for you to basically upgrade your ultimate team via doing SBCs, via just getting coins and players from packs. Rank five, which is 11 wins, the most popular finishing position in the Foot Champions Weekend League. This year for the rewards, you get 30,000 coins, which is massive. The coin injection that is going to happen to this market on the weekend is going to be crazy. 30,000 coins to get for that. Don't write this off, by the way. 1,300 XP, that's pretty massive. A 125k pack, which is about, what, let's say 30,000 coins worth of untradeable value just from packing one or two halfway, maybe 84s or 85s in an ultimate pack, and then also all the quick sell value from everything else inside of it. That's probably about 30,000 coins back from that pack. A 50K pack, which you can probably at least expect to see 15 to 20,000 coins back from as well. Let's just say 15 for good measure. So right now we're up to 75,000 coins of value. And then this is the new change for this year. There's no red picks and there's no tradable team of the week. It is just three... One of four, this is for rank five, untradeable 84 plus rare gold players, which is better player picks than last year and really good fodder, by the way. I think I prefer this over the team of the week red picks personally, but then also an 85 times two rare gold players pack. And guys, that's tradable. And as you look through some of the other ranks, it just gets better. Rank three, you get an 85 times three and an 85 times two, a 100 and a 125k pack and 85,000 coins, which is an increase for coins from rank three from last year. Even if you go all the way down to rank six and seven, you get an 85 plus pack for rank six, a 50K and an ultimate pack. That is much better rewards last year. If you're like, Nate, I can barely qualify for weekend league. Why is it worth the stress? It's worth the stress because you could potentially make 100, 200, 300,000 coins. One pack pull from weekend league rewards makes all the difference. I mean, you're guaranteed to make 50, 60K if you get nine wins in weekend league. If you get six wins in weekend league, which is rank seven, you're getting a one of two 84 plus. You get two 84 plus cards, a 50 and a 100K pack and 15K coins. You're probably making 40K off of this, like 50,000 coins potentially. Obviously, the ceiling is or the sky's the limit, right? You could pack promo cards from this and make hundreds of thousands of coins. Guys, this competition is the cream of the crop competition, and it is the best place to be involved. And I think it's such worth your time. It's so much worth your time. If you've been grinding rivals, it's so much worth your time because of the coin injection and the facilities that you will have after playing this, this competition to upgrade your team. It's going to put you so much further ahead and give you all those coins, the gold then, and buy players for your team to upgrade your squad. And I think that's why it's so important. I, th I think it's so important to be grinding those games. I know a lot of us are doing evolutions. That, you know, is a big draw to the game right now. But the fact that you could potentially pack, we don't know what's going to be in packs technically after 6 p.m. on Friday as a, when a lot of people will be playing foot champs. But whether it's Road to the Knockouts Team 2 or whether we have a different promo that is incoming we might learn a bit more about that today on wednesday i really think guys that it's worth your time because of all the tradable rewards that are being added in this year now some people might say nate taking the team of the week tradable packs away is actually an l isn't it because you're maybe making less coins i think maybe on average you might make maybe ten thousand coins less per week because you're missing out on a couple of discard informs but at the same time, the sky, uh, like the ceiling for um, what you could pack out of those 85 plus packs is higher because now you're going to include promo cards that could be packed in those. And, you know, Mbappe, uh, I mean, I don't know about 85 plus packs. Could they contain heroes or icons? Usually those rating specific packs don't, but you never know with some packs like that from Weekend League. You just never know. So I think it's worth the grind, guys. And that's why I wanted to spend time talking about it in this video. If you are unmotivated to try to get there or if you're like, Nate, the Rivals grind is getting to me. We've got today on Wednesday, right? To get your Rivals rewards, I got to get another win. And I got to win more than just one game because i am got to got to work up to my qualification points amount to get in to play playoffs and to get into the weekend league. Now, also with the weekend league, you think about the market a lot because it's like, well, people want to have the best teams to compete in the weekend league at the highest level possible. And let's talk about the market, guys, because yesterday on Tuesday, 
was a pretty crazy day. Now, a lot of prices really didn't move a whole lot. We talked about the midfielders that dropped off a lot, right? Like De Jong was a card that dropped off a lot yesterday. Chalmany was a card that dropped, but of course, that's because people were doing the Coughlin SBC. That's a direct replacement, a substitute for him. Um, trying to look through a few other cards that I know that dropped. I think Modric dropped yesterday. I think actually Llorente dropped because he can play center mid. Now, Jude is up. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. But for the market as in you know a general sense, a lot of prices are just kind of in the same, right? We just looked at Messi. He's 190,000 coins. Yesterday on Tuesday, he started the day at 190K. He ended the day at 190,000 coins. A lot of the market's still up, right? Kyle Walker's another example we've been looking at. Kyle Walker's still almost 130,000 coins, which he basically is, bar that 125 undercut. That's kind of the same place that he was to start the day yesterday. So the real question is, what's going to happen to the market today, tomorrow? I think it's going to be kind of the same thing. You're going to have some prices for certain cards that maybe move around because of an SBC, or maybe we do get a little bit of a supply SBC today. That UEFA marquee matchups that we talked a lot about yesterday still could potentially happen today on this game. It's dropped on Wednesdays before, but I honestly think the, the market's going to be either staying the same or maybe just dropping a hair, right? Maybe just a couple cards dip in price from where they have been. Now, other cards went up yesterday too. Griezmann, he's maybe down a couple thousand coins right now, but he went up yesterday from about 99K, 100K flat to about 110 because of the release of the Coughlin SBC. There were other cards that had movements like that. Um, Ferland Mendy was one of them, uh, obviously with the French links. Now, Jude Bellingham is moving up because people, I think, expect him to get into Team of the Week today. And if he doesn't get into Team of the Week, he's playing insane anyway, so he's going to have to get some other sort of card, right? We saw Europa League, Conference League and Champions League player of the match cards. That card design was added to the code. Now we haven't actually seen it in game, so maybe that's something that's coming later on. But like Jude is, you know, after yesterday's game and just with how he's been playing in general, going crazy. So I think a lot of people are investing in his card for a potential um, rise in price for a team of the week today. But if you bought cards for your team and you're still up, um, and they're up in value from where you bought them, I think I would just continue holding. Use that team, use those players that you're enjoying, and get those rewards that you can get with the best squad that you can possibly get. Now, one thing I will say is, with Coughlin dropping yesterday, we're, let's, let's move into a little bit of like trading conversation here. If you're trying to make coins right now, Coughlin SBC made shadows basically go extinct. I think they were extinct at one point here in the late night hours. They've started to get listed up. They're about max price, 5,000 coins for all shadows. What that has done is it has created an opportunity for you and me to trade with cards with those chemistry styles because now instead of going and paying, what, 2 or 3K for a shadow to go put on whatever card you want to go put it on, right now some of these cards, and this is a trading opportunity that will probably form more over today, maybe tomorrow and into the weekend if the shadows stay expensive, is people are going to say, I don't want to go buy, try to snipe a shadow if they stay extinct at 5,000 coins. I'd rather go buy the card with the chemistry style already applied. And that is a trading method that might work a little bit better today, tomorrow than it did previously because those shadows are more difficult and more expensive to find on the market. So people just say, let me go buy the player with the chemistry style already applied. So that's kind of a market synopsis of uh, what's going on right now. Now, yesterday, how did I make some coins? We talked about it in yesterday's video, Road to the Knockouts. They're going to be moving more today, guys. There's still fluctuations on the market every which way and direction. Focus on the rare. If you have more than 100,000 coins, focus on the cards that are rare, especially out of packs cards, like Nike Mad Ready cards, like this Kiesa. He fluctuates a lot in price every single day. BVD moves up and down. Sam Kerr, who I flipped, moves up and down. Team of the Week 1, I bought a Doku yesterday at 58K, right around the content drop time, right here. Bought him at 58K. He went all the way back to like 63, 64. Uh, right now, he's like 64,000 coins. That's not a lot of profit, but if you buy a couple of those, you can make some flips. It's really easy to get those flips moving, especially on the out of packs cards and icons, guys, too. Conavaro is an icon that I was watching yesterday. You can buy him at like 400,000 coins, and you can see here he gets rare and goes up to prices of upwards of like 430, 440K. You can make 10 to 15K per card on some of those. Bomb Pastor as a hero card yesterday was down at 105k at the content drop on Snipe right here. Went back up to almost 120. Um, McManaman, I mean, guys, the list goes on of all of these cards um, that you could go and search up. 
from heroes and from icons. McManaman was 140 yesterday, and now he's 155, 160. So the flipping is good. The market is moving. There are cards that are fluctuating. But I think these cards are what a lot of people are interested in right now as well. And yesterday, we, we mentioned Benucci in the video. We mentioned this Benucci card as a live item that might have some price movements. And we specifically said yesterday to sell in the hype. And if you didn't sell in the hype, this was a learning opportunity because Bonucci and Berlin ended up losing the game. So instead of going upwards in price, um, he actually ended up going down because they lost the game. And that happened in a lot of places yesterday. Osaman because of their loss. Bruno Fernandez because of United's loss. And Saka because of Arsenal's loss are down bad in value. Even a card that actually had a winning performance yesterday, Lamer is 220,000 coins. Like, if I didn't have coins and other stuff right now on my transfer list, I bought some of those midfielders that I hope can rebound back, I would so be buying a card like this Lamer because uh, it just, every time these players play, we said it in yesterday's video, I'm going to echo it again for today. If you have anybody that is playing in a match today, which would be Erling Holland, Openda, uh, who else didn't play? Kalulu is going to be playing today. DePaul. We Weefer can't really go anywhere because he's discard value. But anybody who's playing today, guys, sell into the hype of the game. Or at least, if you want to risk it a little bit, sell while the game is going on. But then get out of the card before the game is over. Because after the games end, even if the players win, these cards go down. Because people are trading with them. They're hoping that the cards go up. And they just don't after the games. That's just a trend that we've noticed for the past couple of years. So... During the games, though, they're great to trade with. I bought Osaman right when Napoli scored the first goal for 650k. Sold him for 740, literally minutes after that. That was a good flip. I bought two Mertens for the low 30s, right? Mertens ended up going to 40k plus. He was 40,000 coins, I believe, after the full-time whistle um, when they scored the third goal for the United game. And look where he is right now. Back down to 32k. Will he go back up? Maybe a little bit. The only other problem is for a lot of these cards... The upgrades or the next games aren't happening for like three weeks, right? That's why I sold the Mertens. I bought a bunch of Machado yesterday. Lens shocked Arsenal. Sorry, if any Arsenal fans. Uh, beating them 2-1. to one. This guy went to 14K, right? I bought eight Machados. And as they scored that second goal to go ahead, I bought eight of these cards at 12250 or below. So I'm not making a lot of coins here, but I sold them all at 14k right as the final whistle sounded because I knew that he was going to be dropping back down in price, which he is. He's right now 11, 12,000 coins. He might go back up a little bit, but guys, I would not invest in these cards for the long term just yet. Maybe a card like this that is around this card, okay, there's not a whole lot of risk there, but you know, I do still think that some of these cards are overpriced and they have been overpriced. And with the games that have been happening yesterday, it really started to bring the prices down. Oh, Pendas, 225, right? That's a big drop in price for him. Like a card like Lamer being 214, I would feel a lot more comfortable investing in a card like that. Now, after they secured a win, he's one step closer to an upgrade. And, you know, everything are pointing positively towards him. Whereas other of these cards, I still feel like are overpriced. But in general, I don't think I'm going to be investing in these guys too much right now. If they drop at all, maybe today on Wednesday or tomorrow, maybe you put one or two in the team. But for live cards, it's always a bit risky. They usually do end up rising pretty well because they are live. But with the upgrades being so far away, maybe we have a team two coming out with more live cards that could shake some things up. I think I'm going to pass for right now on some of these. Maybe my opinion will change tomorrow. But the biggest lesson learned is sell into the hype of these cards and sell before the game is over for like literally every single one of them because they drop off post game all the time. But again, watch the players that are playing today. Openda, watch his card for sure. Kalulu, if there's an upset or especially for the teams that are favored to win, those have the biggest drop offs if they don't win, right? Uh, Bruno Fernandez yesterday was uh, 700,000 coins when United was winning. And now Bruno, I think, is rebounding back up a little bit. He's about 450K. These card prices will fluctuate a lot. Like the Lamer that we were just looking at, he's dropping down from 300,000 coins. I bought one yesterday at 280, sold it at just uh, shy of 310. He's right now back to 219, but this card was 214 about an hour ago. He might go to 250 again today. Like these guys will fluctuate if you time it right. Yeah, see how rare he is? He might go all the way back up to about 250K. There's going to be fluctuations. If you time it right, that's some of the best ways to make coins, but it is difficult, right? It's very difficult to trade with those. So my best advice for you is if you invest in a card and it goes up before the game, if Openda rises today before the game, sell into the hype. 
don't risk it take the easy cash and then buy back in later on if the price even if they win like and they pull off an upset and the card price goes up the card price will come back down before it starts to rise again as these guys always drop after the game but it is very risky guys those road to the knockouts are so fun to trade with but they are 100 percent the cards that lose people on this game the most coins every single year because people hold on and you know of course everybody's like nah i want to get out i want my coins after a game especially if a team loses the investment as comes with a lot of risk so divert all that risk selling the hype and you don't have to worry about it as much now really quickly today's content on wednesday what else could we have right we mentioned it again maybe that uefa marquee matchups sbc that could bring supply yesterday was a pretty good content day i'm expecting it seems like we're kind of on a method of like one day's good the next day's pretty slow right you know monday was really slow hopefully today um in terms of the market i hope today is actually a bit of a slower day it might actually help some things rise back up in price a little bit i'm saying that as all of my except for 148k all of my 1.5 mil coins are invested in stuff right now for quick flips and hopefully for a bit of a bounce back but we could get supply today that could happen new team of the week is going to be coming out today as well that'll be interesting as new team of the week cards are always really good to trade with that also means that team of the week number two is going out of packs if you've got any investments there uh, i did pick up a harry kane yesterday at like 129k He's about 140 right now, so not a big rise. But that's a card that I could see moving up just because he's rare. It's Harry Kane. He's got that 70 pace. He's got 94 shooting. And it's a rare card in general as we head towards the weekend league. That's a card that I think I might hold on to a little bit. If you invested in Matoma or Talisco or Cancelo, those cards be careful with. But hopefully they should continue to rise today. And guys, we really don't have any other leaks. The other thing, again, we shouted in yesterday's video that could be content that we see soon is more foundations right you've got the um the play the squad foundations players like we have benini and we have um leroy fair we got some of these other players in here i would expect to see the liga nw nwsl we've got the saudi league and like we mentioned yesterday mls and you know either even a couple other leagues that could be featured as a part of squad foundations and those seem to come on kind of a quieter days of content so we'll see if we get anything along those lines, some people have been asking about Nate, are we going to get silver stars? I don't know about silver stars, rightfully, because uh, EA said that all team leaks are going to be 80 plus in the team of the week. And there is a silver team of the week card searchable in the club search. There's a design. But as of right now, we have nothing. So I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to see. Last week, we had the themed team pursuit, which is not going away. It's still there. We'll see if EA drops Silver Stars today. That'd be fun, at least. It's something else to grind. Uh, and guys, they updated the game yesterday. But look, my game literally just crashed right now. It didn't fix a thing, man. So very disappointed by that as I reset the game again. And uh, we reset the game so many times yesterday after EA said that was one of the things that they fixed. But hopefully today is a good day on the market. We'll be making coins, of course, as always, on the Twitch stream. If you want to check out that link, it is down below in the description. And... I will see you guys in the Twitch stream today. If you enjoyed the video today, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And subscribe if you're new. It's been Nathan for the account. See you guys in the stream. Peace.